what's up youtube i'm back here at the shop trying to upgrade some of my equipment so i don't keep tearing it up behind me we have the bh217 bush hog now this is a great bush hog i like everything about it besides the rear edge on the deck it is not really reinforced good and just like here recent, the last time the straw that broke the camel's back i guess you could say crossing a ditch with my tractor missed a spot of grass i thought well i'll just throw it in reverse and back up well i picked the bush hog up let it down when i crossed the ditch the edge of it uh caught the the dirt bank of the ditch and it pushed i mean it didn't even cut in the dirt probably that far it pushed the edge of the bush hog on the back into the blade bow, 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 you know huge racket had to stop you can't really get under there with a hammer to hit it and the metal is kind of springy on the back so even when you hit it it doesn't move it enough to get it out of the way of the blade so put my four-wheeler to it big long chain get a run and go jerk the side of it out now i've done that probably half a dozen times in the past couple months and i'm really tired of doing it so just going to walk you through the steps of what i've done to the back of this thing to remedy that problem First off, I brought the bush hog up here and took the plasma cutter. I'll put a little time lapse here in the top right and kind of show you the process because I've I videoed some of this. Took a plasma cutter, didn't clean the paint off, nothing. This is a bush hog, so I'm not trying to make it look like a $100 an hour piece of work when I'm going to beat up on it behind my tractor. So plasma cutter around the side. Once I got to the reflector back here, I started going up with it pretty hard taper I, I capped these off which that's kind of the last thing I did on the whole thing but I'll go ahead and tell you now I capped off the frame uh, under here so this junk didn't get in there but I cut this all the way up just below the weld on the top deck because that's where it starts to be double layer right there you're not going to bend anything right there that's the strongest point of the whole deck on the edge So cutting that all the way around. Next, I uh, cut these beams. I think they're 91 inches long overall. About 42 inches back, I cut a half inch wide wedge and folded them up. This put the back at the height that I wanted, which was about uh, 11 and a half inches up or something like that at the bottom. Well, I figured I drew it up where I could see how high it was going to come before I cut the wedge. I capped the fronts off where junk didn't get in there. As far as welding it, I put one little weld at the bottom corner here, one little weld at the top, and one little weld at the back on both beams or skids or runners whatever you want to call them on both sides then i measured it between them about 88 inches for this bar here put it across here had a guy help me hold it up while i tacked it then i burned it in took these just laid some rough pieces across here marked the bottom at the miter and i also burned it in where it crossed the deck right there i actually pushed it to where it laid on the deck because that's i wanted it to support right there this will hold it side to side and it'll also hold it from being pushed in at the back the way i've got this gusted i also burned some big heavy uh welds right there what material i could get around because i'm never going to adjust this i'm no pro level bush hogger i'm not going to be switching stuff all the time it's going to be what it's going to be for what i'm going to do then after all said and done I come back and stitched it all the way down the top and then I picked it up with a forklift and stitched along the bottom edges as well but the goal with this was to make it kind of like a skid steer bush hog where it's kicked up in the back so when I back over stuff 
it's going to try to bend it over at this level not down here See, that was the problem when you try to just uh, take a, a bulldozer or something for example if they try to push a tree over level with the ground it doesn't work too well come up a little bit you got some leverage so this will allow me to cut through a lot bigger stuff without phasing the bush hog that much because it's going to gradually bend that sh uh, those trees over with this and then the blade's going to catch it before it ever gets up under the bush hog and then it'll be it'll be money then so hopefully this solves my problems i will probably add some video on the end of this video to show you how this works i've got a gully full of uh, pretty good sized trees that i'm going to test it out on as soon as i get my tractor back so uh stay tuned for that video right here all right we're down here in the uh, edge of my property down on the gully got some pretty good sized saplings and brush back here i'm going to show you how this piece on the bush hold that i've fabbed up uh, in the beginning of the video works. I also uh, got the tractor serviced. It has about 85 hours on it and had to put the third function valve on it. So now it can run stuff off the front. It shows you how it looks on the handle. Big shout out to States Flag and Turf for doing that for me. But I'm going to mount the camera on the back glass and I'll show you how this this bar folds these trees over. to worry about pushing in the side of the bush hog and if I had done that just something that simple before it would have been game over for the afternoon
you can see by the video this is a major improvement from what i for what i'm doing with the bush hog adding this uh kick up in the back with the heavier duty steel this brush in here you can see by the video i was just backing straight through trees whatever brush piled up in the trees it didn't matter that bar helped push it out of the way and keep it out from the blade enough where the blade could slowly chip it up and it being so wide you can see here which is kind of hung sideways right now but it is as wide as my tractor is so i can pretty well just back into any hole of any brush and it's going to cut a wide enough path where i don't mess up anything on my tractor just as long as my mirrors aren't hanging out catching any branches that's the only thing i really had to watch out for but this did exactly if not more than i intended it to even in the dirt you know getting in the dirt i was plowing through unlevel spots not picking the bush hog up you can see some spots out there where it just gouged in the dirt before that would have put me out for the evening the side would have pushed in it would have started hitting the blade and i would have got frustrated and went home but now that i've done this it's made the bush hog tough enough to handle what i like to do with it and that's plow through anything that i can back over so i think i've got 172 dollars in this steel is how much it costs from our steel supplier so not a whole lot of money involved to make the bush hog basically indestructible as far as backing over things and cutting trees down and stuff so definitely happy with my upgrade uh, a couple of my pictures have been of this thing have been shared around the internet and i think you tractor guys are as bad as prius owners some of you getting all bent out of shape about uh what i was doing with the bush hog or whatever but i make things do what i want them to do it don't mean i have to i'm already four thousand dollars deep in this bush hog and i'm not gonna go out and buy a proper brush cutter when i've already got this it's already been tore up in the back i might as well modify it and save another you know five six grand so that's what i did and i hope you enjoyed the video of me uh cutting this brush around the scully i've still got some more to do but it's not going to be as exciting as what you already watched so i'm going to get done before dark and call the evening so thanks for watching this bush hog upgrade of the bh217 bush hog see you guys